people uh, allied with the protesters, assaulting RCMP officers, including in one instance trying to ram members of the RCMP. This kind of conduct is totally unacceptable. Assaulting law enforcement officers who are simply doing their job. The Premier calling for calm after a showdown at the Canada-U.S. border earlier today. RCMP moved in this afternoon trying to break up the tense four-day border blockade at Coots, but it backfired, and at this hour, the standoff in southern Alberta continues. Good evening. A second line of trucks and vehicles is now blocking Coots and the American border from the rest of Alberta. Right now, Highway 4 is completely blocked off by vehicles and protesters. That new line of vehicles now set up at the commercial vehicle inspection station in between the two lanes of Highway 4 here. Coots is right here. The American border is here. So that means the small village of 250 people is currently trapped between the protesters and the American border. RCMP officers were trying to force the first group of drivers to leave this afternoon when a second convoy cut off the rest of the highway bypassing an RCMP checkpoint. The group says it's refusing to leave until all COVID-19 health restrictions are lifted. RCMP say what may have began as a peaceful assembly quickly turned into an unlawful blockade. Police say it's preventing emergency services and first responders and supply lines from moving. The Premier says he's received reports of people attempting to assault police officers, including attempts to ram a police officer with a vehicle. Uh, I uh, once again would plea uh, for calm and uh, ask folks who may have, whose tempers may be running high uh, to channel that frustration into peaceful and lawful protest uh, rather than uh, what we've been seeing today uh, in southern Alberta. And he says about 100 protesters are refusing to negotiate in good faith with police, even trying to ram officers with a vehicle. He has asked his justice and transportation ministers to reach out to the federal public safety minister to seek expanded services and extended hours from Canada's border service agency at Alberta's other border crossings as he expects further interruptions at the Coots crossing. The mayor of Coots says it feels like they're being held hostage. I don't know how many times I can say that I want that thing gone so that we have freedom of movement and that commerce can resume. This is, uh, it's bigger than I think the people that uh, put it on realized. And I don't believe they planned for the reaction that they're getting. Mounties say they tried negotiating with drivers, but the protesters did not listen. No one was arrested today. At this point, there's another standstill. And stranded truck drivers are losing time and money as the blockade drags on. CTV's Turia Isri reports. In just a few days, protesters have cost the Canadian economy hundreds of millions of dollars. The ones who want to make a, a statement chose Coots because this is the this is where it's going to hurt us. Around 20,000 trucks pass through the Coots border every month, doing $10 billion in trade between Canada and the U.S. With each passing hour of the blockade, losses are piling up. This economist says $2 billion is a conservative estimate. There is corn flour, there's bananas, there's... You know, you name it, and there's all types of fruit out there which is not moving. This is totally uh, unheard of. Food shipments could spoil, including 150 truckloads of Canadian beef. Fuel is also going to waste, and stranded truckers have few options. We have a lot of truckers, they don't even have food. Some of them have, like, the medical issues. Edmonton driver Lovepreet Singh was stuck in Montana. With no other choice, he backed up and went the long way home. I have to travel all the way to British Columbia, and then I have to enter Canada. Other drivers on the U.S. side of the border are waiting it out, like Sam Shahal. We've been burning a few, we are wasting our time, and we are not getting the jobs done. Shahal joined the NDP in a news conference. The damage to our economy without that border crossing is devastating and the harm being caused to so many people to appease a small but vocal minority is not acceptable. Cindy Clark is feeling the damage. She owns a pottery business in Coots and initially supported the convoy. You're allowed to have the views you like and you're allowed to state them, but you're not allowed to step on my toes and my yard while you're doing it. A community cutoff and a blockade reverberating across the country. Taria Isri, CTV News, Edmonton.